All right. So fall Charlotte, 1983. Um, <laughs> what happened? Oh, God. <laughs> so we had we had the, that engine, right? And Maurice and I knew it. I mean, we didn't have a track. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we had two of them. And so I called the shop. I said, dang, man, we're getting our ass handed to us here. And, you know, I said, I guess, I mean, we, we worked on the car. So luckily Pontiac and, you know, they gave us one ton of time and done the whole deal and, so just come see me when you get back. And we, I mean, yeah, back in was there four days, right? Three yeah. days. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying to fit. So, anyway, so I I knew about the engines. You know, I knew. Well, I knew we had two because we'd done it some. Yeah, you know, with Kyle and I knew how to pump them and you know the whole deal. Uh, that goes back to what Chief taught me, right? So yeah, yeah. I was pretty good at it. You know, so we put them in. Nobody knew. I mean, I pumped both engines, you know, did the whole deal. Um, never even thought about Richard winning a race. You know, we were – it's kind of wrong because, you know, back then, so you pitted on, you know, and you had the paddock. You remember where the paddock yeah. down there? So Chief and Roy Hill, they were down there drinking moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> so it was during the race there. I, and next thing I know, you know, somebody tapped me on the shoulder and they said, hey, Chief wants you over there. And I walked up. Him and Roy was standing on the fence. Hey, you got any hats? Or, you know, it's like they were just, you know. And so Chief said, what are you going to do if Richard wins? I go, what do you mean, what am I going to do? He said, what are you going to do with Richard Wins? I go, oh, God. Okay. And I, Now, were you in Kyle? You were in Kyle's I pick. was Kyle's crew. Okay, yeah. yeah Kyle's yeah. Pollard. Yeah. And because Steve had gone to Terry's, I believe, in, because yeah. it was Pollard and Wade, or might have been Larry and Robin, I think, because I had Kyle. Yeah. So, anyway, you know, Richard won the race. They put those lefts on the rights. You know, I think that's what really got them mad, right? And, you know, so uh rolled up there. I said, dang, this ain't going to be good. <laughs> Holy crap, this ain't going to be good. So Richard was up in the press box doing the race interview, and I was <clears> – they pumped it. And I, I forget who was – they said, hey, uh, yeah, something happened here because I couldn't get – I couldn't get – the cylinder I needed to pump, they didn't pump. I, I was hoping because I could get the thing in the hole to – spark plug thing to – so I said, shit, we're screwed here. Anyway, so they said, well, let's cool it down. Yeah, we'll pull the head off. And I, oh, God. I said, now I know. I said, I told, I think, it might, I know Beatty was there. I don't know if Gasway's there. I forget. I said, I'll be back in a minute. So it just so happened, Junior and them, Daryl would run second. This started to hold deal about you don't leave. Like they checked the first couple of cars, right? Yeah. So if the first one's illegal, they can, but anyway, so. In the, and so they knew it was taking a while because it was dark. And, of course, there was Junior over campaigning. Yeah, it's a bunch of boy. I mean, yeah, it's like <laughs> we lacked about years later. And yeah. I said, yeah, you load your crap up because I knew y'all were illegal. And he said, oh, yeah, but this couldn't do anything about it then. But he was campaigning. You know, I get it. Yeah, it's funny. So I went down the paddock, and there was Maurice and Roy and the whole clan down there drinking and you know, Maurice just laughed. He said, man, you're so – I went, what do you mean I am? He said, yep. What are you going to do now? I go, you need to come up here. He goes, what am I going to do? I said, I don't know. You need to come up here. I said, because I'm going to take the hit on this, I think. He goes, 
Ah, come on. Yeah, we, we, you know, TV had that Mickey Mouse hat on the whole deal. We were, it was funny. I mean, I was going to back him up. I mean, if I, if I need to take the hit, I was going to do it. I didn't care. I now, mean, why were you going to take the hit if you were Kyle's crew chief? Well, just because the NASCAR knew I was the tuner. Okay, all right. Yeah. So, you know, I'd pump yeah. both engines. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. Um, so, Chief come up here. Richard had made his way from the press box. They told him there had been a problem, right? He come down there, and uh, Richard said, what in the world's going on? And she says, oh, it might be a problem here. You know, and so here was the chief. He was wide open in Beatty or I don't know whether it's Art Crab or who who was the motor guy measuring stuff. That sounds about right. You know, he said, need to need to just cool it off. And Chief looked at him and said, you can take that damn thing to Alaska and it ain't going to be cool <laughs> up. <laughs> and he just walked out. <laughs> and Richard looked at him and said, what are you going to do now? I said, I'm screwed, dude. So, anyway. I think they got more trouble with the lefts on the right. Yeah. You know, but. I mean, everybody knows it's pretty much a comment. I mean, people, it's not like people didn't, you know, just you just didn't get caught. Kind of like running buckshot or whatever you call it. But anyway, yeah, that was that was it. That was the whole story. Then, you know, it kind of went downhill after that for Petty Enterprises, you know. So, At what point did you find out or get the sense that Richard was going to be leaving? The next morning. The next morning? Yeah. After that? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. I mean, he, th- he'd been talking about it yeah. a little bit with, I think, Rick or Curb or whoever else, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, uh, we knew about it, but then, you know, the next morning it kind of blowed up. Yeah. What happened? I mean. Uh, Richard came in there and, you know, his finger's about 10 feet long, right? <laughs> and you could, like, you know, I saw his finger and it's like, holy crap, and then. Um, then he told me that he didn't tell me he was leaving. He just pretty much told me he had an opportunity to yeah. leave. And, you know, uh, it's kind of a deal because Kyle, they had signed Seven Eleven for Kyle, right? And, you know, so, um, or we had, we had Seven Eleven that year, but we'd gone to, a, was going to a Forbes 84. So anyway, that that's whenever I knew that was pretty much the the end of it. Pretty sad. Did he know anything about the engine, Richard? Yeah. You know, if he did, we never talked about it. Okay. You know, just uh, he just. I mean, yeah, the, those brothers. So I don't know what they talked about. Right. I just. Like I always, t- I was just the messenger, or I was just the guy pumping them. <laughs> I was doing what they told yeah, me to. Yeah. So the next year, nineteen eighty four, Level Cross Petty Enterprises, mm-hmm. but Richard's not driving for the team. But I'm sure that he left a pretty big shadow behind. Oh yeah, we went to Ford first year for Ford. Yeah, when um, you went to Ford in eighty four. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't it? Was it 84 or 85? Maybe it was, I mean, I tell you, Rick's been so long now. If we ran, because uh, Kyle went to the Wood Brothers, what, 86 or 85? 85. He went, to, yeah, so we had, we ran Ford one year. There. Okay. And, because I know we built a front steer, a Laughlin car. And, yeah, we had that red one. But that's where the paint scheme for the wood bros kind of come from when Kyle. And, but, yeah, so we had a really tough winter there, you know, building Fords and stuff and thought it was going to be a pretty good deal, which it was. But, you know, they – but, you know, couldn't get a lot of help. Junie Dunlovey, bless his soul, he helped us a lot Yeah. on what we needed to do. And, you know, Hutch helped me a lot. You know, Dick did on building some – your cars and um so we had but we finally had the funding to do it yeah um but we was just behind on i mean chief and them just you know all of a sudden you swap everything over 
to Ford and getting the parts and pieces and then, you know, uh, so we were behind there for the longest time. I think it took us about Wilkes to finally get our act together in some ways. But short track stuff was okay. Mile and a half stuff, you know, we just had, you know, engine problems. And, I mean, Maurice and them, Chief and them, they were working their hearts out. But, you know, it's like all of a sudden you have to change the dynos. Just a lot of things, yeah. right? And then, you know, I just – it wasn't going to work. It wasn't going to work. Who was in charge at that point? Kyle. Yeah. Kyle was. You know, and I think that it helped in some ways, you know, because Richard wasn't there. And I think it helped Kyle and Maurice with their relationship because they're the ones that knew that they had to make it work if it was any way possible. So I think it brought them closer together. You know, so uh, Kyle was in charge, but, you know, he kind of left it to – me to you know we were building and ordering parts and you know um it was it was really some long months here really so you know it was but i knew it was pretty much the end of it you know i felt i like could sad because i mean i was you know from when i went there in 81 it was so robust and so much you know going on and then by 84 you could just see it you know but it's that's you know that's how it kind of evolved. You wound up working with Richard over at Curb mm-hmm. in 85. How did that come about? Richard called me. I'd left, and, you know, Nancy and I, we had just – I didn't know what I was going to do. And uh, Wayne Bumgarner was over with Shards, and me and Wayne were friends for a long time. He said, come over and help me. I left Petty's, but it's kind of ironic, you know, I still, I still, I went to work for Wayne in a cup car in the Bush car for Bouchard, but I was still tuning Kyle's engines at the track, you know, just because they didn't have anybody. So anyway, um, and then, um, I don't know, Buddy and Richard, you know, they had such a good year, and I told Rich, I don't understand why. I mean, gosh, they won the 200 race. They did yeah. the whole deal, right? Yeah. And I think it won Dover, you know, and the whole – but anyway, I don't get in the middle of that. But, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, but Robert had built the engines, and then the next year, you know, Curb, he wanted Dan Gurney to build the engines out there. But, then, you know, was shipping the engines to California. Good you know, night. Back. Wow. And it was just – yeah. It, I mean, I get it. I mean, it sounded good. I mean, I love Dan Gurney. It was amazing to get to meet the guy and become good friends, you know, for, you know, but, and he was a very smart individual, but it was a struggle. It was a struggle. It was, you know, and luckily at the, at the end of 85, you know, that um, Richard was going back to Level Cross and Dale would go back and yeah. Yeah, he could put the band back together. I was really happy to see that. That was because those two were meant for each other. <laughs> they were. I yeah. mean, it's like they were. That's that's. You know, if you see one, you're going to see the other one. Not too far behind. Yeah. So that's funny. Now Richard did go back to Level Cross, and mm-hmm. Dale Inman was going to be joining him. Did anybody talk to you about going back to Petty Enterprises, or were you pretty focused on remaining a crew chief at that point? Um. Or did you have anything else? I, no, I didn't really. You know, I've always just kind of, yeah, wh- whatever's going to work out, it's work out. But I, we moved to Kannapolis. We had really good neighbors. You know, we, uh, we had a good church. And Nancy, you know, Emily was born in February, Valentine's Day, 85, because I thought it was, I was in Daytona. I thought it was a wake-up call, but it was the hospital. My son, my son, brother-in-law called me. Tell me, hey, you got another little girl. It's like, but same deal with Chief. I picked the phone up and hung it up, you know, at 5 <laughs> o'clock in the morning. You know, it, you know just it, it rang again. You know, it's like, hey, you know, this is it, you know. And so anyway, so Emily was born in Valentine's Day, 85. And so we had two kids, had a great neighborhood. We had great church, great neighbors. You know, the neighbors was – from Herb Nabb's family, 
Booby Harrington's family. Yeah. You know, so we, of course, being in racing, so we all really had a good – and I just wasn't going to drive to Level Cross. Never even considered it. You know, okay. just never yeah. – never yeah. – because I just knew it would take away from my family, and I was done with that. You know, I was just – we had two little girls just living in a little house, and we were we were really happy, you know, because, like I said, we we had our church, and, you know, the ladies, the family lived side of us, you know, just uh, – it was uh, Herb Nab's wife's sister, uh-huh. you know, so, you know, and then um, – I work for U.S. Tobacco, live across the street. But we just liked living there. And I knew driving an hour and 15 minutes and stuff to curb, I just – or to Petty Enterprise, I just didn't want to do it. I was going to do something else. And, you know, I knew – I said, well, let's just see how this plays out at curbs. And, you know, I, after a couple of races, I said, you know, I'm just going to take some time off. And that's what I did. It took – Nancy was working for Tom Grady, the attorney – yeah, you know, so they're in Kannapolis, and so I, uh, let's see, so Emily was, so she was four or five months, and Aaron was probably 18 months, so I played Mr. Mom, I stayed at home. Did you really? I did, took yeah. care of Nancy worked, and, you know, we didn't have a lot of debt, I mean, a little house we lived in, I mean, it was, I guess it seemed like a lot to him, but... Yeah, you know, so I cooked and cleaned and took care, changed diapers and hung out with those two girls and just had a great time, right? Yeah. Just because I've been gone so much, so I just need to refocus my life on, you know, that being a parent. And, you know, so then Kyle called me one day and he had a guy, Randy Hope, that wanted to do some bush races. I said, yeah, we can do it some. And so I went back doing that a little bit, you know, and... Um, yeah, I always, yeah, Rick, I just enjoy the, I always enjoyed the bush race and lay mall sports yeah. and race. That's where I grew up. So, you know, it's, uh, so that's kind of where I went then. Just took care of Kyle's stuff on with Randy Hope, the insurance guy out of Columbia. I think it was something like that. You wound up over with Michael Waltrip and Bahari Racing in 1987. But you parted ways with the team late in '88. Was the gig with Bill Elliott already on the yeah. table? Okay. Yeah. 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 That was already. Barney Hall put that together. <laughs> Bar- <laughs> There's more deals made in Earl Parker's <laughs> champion plug van than people realize, right? So, yeah, it's, uh, uh, yeah, Barney Hall. Uh, it's kind of ironic because, you know, um, I had – Barney had talked to me about it, and Bill, we'd talked a little bit about it, but not much. I mean, Bill was kind of – he was kind of like me, just kind of keep to yourself, kind of quiet about it. But, you know, it's uh, – so anyway, we just started really talking, and then um, he – Blew up there to Hickory and took me and Nancy down there to Dawsonville and just, uh, yeah, Christmas Day we loaded our stuff up and went to Dawsonville. You know, and uh, always thankful for that, Bill and Ernie and Dan and the whole family. You know, just very appreciate that whole deal. And, you know, now we get to race Chase some here. So it's yeah. kind of, you know, um, I still – Seem like I restore some of Bill's cars. <laughs> I enjoy all we always we always enjoy doing that here. You know, just the history of it and but yeah, we went to a Dawsonville and, you know, had some success. You know, a couple races we had like World Six Hundred and a couple races we you know, really had the best car and was gonna win and something would break. Michigan, I think we broke a fit and with the oil pump and you know, Charlotte we broke a just a bolt holding a caliper on, which was yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Then we had another broke uh, something. I forget which race. We should have won about four or five races a year. We ended up winning Dover. Then, you know, tragedy hit there in Atlanta, you know, with Mike. And that was um, – that was 
that was a hard thing. That was something that I'll be honest with Rick. It's like I'd signed. And I didn't want to leave Dawsonville, but we we needed to. Where we made a mistake, we should have lived on down in Cummings, and I shouldn't really, because the uh, Dawson School, great school, great teachers stuff. But our girls just never felt like they thought they was a little bit behind from when we left Hickory, right? So we made a decision we was going to uh, move back, you know, and I was okay with it. I mean, in some ways, because Junior is, is going to start that deal with Sterling. And, uh, Sue, Thanksgiving, no, works for a weekend. Uh, I went over to Junior's and we sit down and talk for quite a while, a couple of hours after practice, you know. And, um, so anyway, he really wanted me to come do Sterling's deal. And I said, well, let me think about it. Didn't, I said, you know, I think I'm going to do it because this uh, give me the opportunity to move back to Hickory or girls and be my Nancy's parents lived there. My mom and dad still, you know, still lived there. So that's what we did, moved back. Um, but anyway, Mike, when he got, you know, killed there in Atlanta, that was a race. I mean, we had that thing, you know, where we'd ran well all day. I thought we was going to just last stop and – you know, um, now were you changing tires at the time? No, you were, Dan, were you going over the wall? No, okay, all right. No, Mike was changing right rear. You know, Tommy, Cole, Jack, Dan was changing the front, and Clinton, he was carrying, and uh, Mike Brandt gassed. And so, you know, was getting ready to pit because he didn't have pit boxes and walked down through here. Like, it's, it's gonna be the last stop, right? You know, it's his last caution. And hey, yeah, uh, let's just get him to that ball, ball, all right? Give him the speech, and you know, Reese, don't worry about it, boss. I got this, and you know, then it's like I turned around, and all of a sudden, all oh, hell broke loose, right? And so I run you know, on the other side of the car, and there was Mike, and you know, help me, boss, help me, you know, and you know, this he passed away later that night. That was. You know, that's something – that's tough. So <clears throat> we knew we needed to do something. I didn't know what to do. And we had – went to Mike's funeral, and the next day – I mean, Bill knew about the deal with Junior. I didn't know what to do. I hated to leave Bill over that. You know, but just to – it haunted me so much. Just it hurt because uh, Rich and I have become a pretty good friends. And anyway, I said, you know, emotionally I needed to stay, but you know, I felt for my family. We needed to go, right? And so that's kind of what we did. Yeah. And um, you know, it's whether it's the right thing to do. I don't know. I mean, you know, just. Uh, but I did. We did it. So I went to went to work for Junior. Let know. me ask you this question: People remember the name Mike Rich, mm -hmm. but they don't remember the person. Yeah. Who who was he? He was. Uh, uh, so Rich, he would come to pit practice in his cowboy boots, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, he is so athletic, and oh yeah, he would. But he worked hard at you know he had an air bottle and a gun and even had a, a car old Thunderbird race car up there in his basement. He lived around in Blairsville, you know he was a run heavy equipment, just you know just you know I can still see Mike just always smile just you know he you know just a good guy. And Teresa, his wife, you know, she's a sweet soul. And, you know, so he was just a – he's a guy that everybody liked, right? He yeah. was that guy. Yeah. But very athletic. Uh, you know, we'd won – it's so hard because we'd won the Rockingham pit crew yeah. deal a week or two before that. Then yeah. on Saturday night before the Atlanta race, uh, Harry Mellon and, you know, them had a get-together for us there – in Atlanta at a hotel, you know, everybody stayed. Really? And, yeah. and we'd had a really good time, right? And you just think about, you know, 
24 hours later, you know, everything was just so yeah. turned upside down, right? So, Rich, he was, you know, he would just take a bullet for you. He's a guy that you'd want to go to battle with, and, you know, he, you know, he, he just a um, person that, just a good guy. But, gosh, he was a hard worker, hard worker. He worked, he earned that spot on that pit crew, and, you know, he, his hand and eye stuff is he was just amazing, but he just he was just a natural athlete, you know, wrestler, I think, because he just built that way. But um, so that one hurt. It still hurts. I mean, after all these years, it still hurts. I think about Mike all the time. You know, just uh, you know, we never were. It took me. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. You know, and Junior and I talked about this. You know, I struggled for a couple of years. Yeah, you know, what fair is Sterling? I mean, I struggled. Did you really? I did. Oh, yeah. I mean, because you struggle getting that close to people. Because, you know, Nancy and I have become good friends with him and Teresa and, you know, just. uh, So, yeah, I struggled for a long time with that, you know, because, you know, just to be, to see it and just, you know, and I remember. I changed tires for a long time. You know, changed rear because I was left-handed. And, you know, back in, you didn't have extra people. So I said, well, I'll see. I'll change. I'll try it. And I did it one time in the 500 with Sterling, their first race. And I never heard the cars before, but I heard them that day. You know, like wow. you, you just – you tore it out, right? So but, you changed rear tires – at Daytona, yeah, the following February, yeah, and wow, I never did it again. Wow, yeah, I just never. I don't know. I mean, just, just no. I just couldn't do it again. Yeah, because you never heard, you never heard the cars before Zoom and Pass. Because you remember back in there wasn't no pit road speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they talked about. It. I don't know if we had it then. That's trying to do some, but still, you just never heard cars. But this time, yeah, you. Know, you yeah, if yeah, you know, somebody's pitting behind you, and they you know they slam on the brakes and squeal the tires, you know you just you know, yeah you you're you always just watching and just yeah you know, I said I can't do it I never did it again. I I, I hate to go from that to uh, early in '91. You go mm-hmm. to Bristol with Sterling, yeah, and, and he gets in a. Pretty serious wreck and fire at Bristol. Mm-hmm. What do you remember about that? You know, I remember. So we we kind of figure out that the tailpipe had broke, a piece of the tailpipe had broke off, you know, and and it it cut down the left rear. But before that, he got in a wreck and backed in the wall. And so we were. And you know, uh, to the, today it still haunts me the way that all come about because like it's just stupid on my part. But you know, at the, the heat of the moment, you do anything to finish, right? You know. So we took out Jack stand, and I don't know. I mean, I'll take the blame for it because I was a crew chief, which I probably did. It. I'm not going, you know. In took that bungee cord and, you know, tied the dick lid up and got it, you know, and taped it up, the only deal. Then, but that tailpipe broke. And I doubt it when that thing broke, it backed in the wall. I think the jack stand broke the neck off for the fuel cell. That thing caught on fire. And, you know. Now, did you have it in there to keep the dick lid up? Okay, yeah. Yeah, just trying to get it up. And because I remember t- we took and took a bungee cord and wrapped it over the deck lid and hooked it to the bumper, right? Yeah. And raised the back of the car up the jack screws to get it up off the ground, or took a jack. I forget, you know, Rick. But it was hard. That was tough. That was just that was a stupid deal. I shouldn't have. That was stupid on my part. And you know, that was that was just wrong. Yeah. Like it was just huge mistake. And you know, I screwed you. I took the blame for that. And you know, I, that was tough because poor Sterling. He didn't deserve Aster. You know, Sterling deserved a lot better. <laughs> Than what yeah, I gave yeah, him yeah. there at juniors, you know, yeah. I was so happy that he got with Glover and Larry and Am that he kid finally 
won 10 races, Darlington. I mean, we sit on yeah. the pole at Darlington. We'd, I, mean, I don't know how many times we run second, right? But, you know, yeah. it's, uh, you know, it's a deal where um, I don't, I honestly don't believe I gave Sterling a fair shake because I was just not doing what I tried. But, you know, I was still in that funk about Mike and, you know, just, you just didn't, you know, you didn't get help. You didn't know yeah. what to do, right? Yeah. You just deal with it yourself. And, yeah. Yeah, but Sterling getting burned up, that was that that one right there still haunted. I got pictures. I still got pictures of that car in my toolbox at home. Do you? Really? Oh yeah. Like I'll keep them. Just I don't know why I do. They're still in my toolbox in my house. Just yeah. You know, in ever. You know, we took lots back to Wilkesboro. Junior wanted him to drive car. I didn't care. You know, what I'm saying Sterling come here and start a car. And when I saw Sterling, you know, it it was upset because you know. I said, man, look what I've done to that guy, you know, seriously. So it was hard. It was hard. And I met it. I mean, because I was a crew chief, so I should take the blame for it, right? Because yeah. everybody did what I told them. You know, yeah. so, <clears throat> you know, Sterling and I, we talked about it, though. You know, you know and um, just uh, thank God he's just a good soul. Yeah. I love Sterling. Yeah. You know, I'm a huge fan. I was so happy when he – started having success because i knew how much he he deserved it he's such a good race car driver right yeah. he, like i said he deserved a lot better than what i gave him Mary juniors he really did 